Mukesh, it is so great to have you here. We're here in Albany at the Nanotech Center having this conversation about the full stack future of compute. And boy, what a great opportunity to have you join us on the 6.5. Thank you. It's my honor to share what we do here in Albany Nanotech. Yeah, so much history uh, with IBM uh, and chips. I mean, you know, you were doing uh, your own first party silicon for systems before it was cool, right? Uh, we talk about heterogeneous computing. You'd be doing a lot of that with ASICs, uh, fixed function uh, accelerators. It, it is super exciting. I mean, and at one point you were a major manufacturer. In fact, uh, I worked for a systems uh, provider in the 90s that bought chips from IBM uh, Broad Scale Foundry, which uh, I, I know that strategy has changed. But uh, here we are, uh, it's an exciting week here uh, with the chipset and everything. But can you talk about your vision and your strategy uh, m moving forward? And uh, before I forget, I just I want to you know point out the incredible amount of IP that you provide, sometimes publicly, uh, sometimes not to some of the biggest chip producers and designers on the planet. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much for uh, again this opportunity. You know, IBM as a company, our strategy is very clear. We are very laser focused on our hybrid cloud and AI strategy, right? And as you said, from the beginning, IBM has been, you know, working on the full stack approach. I call IBM stack the, the golden stack. <laughs> it's a golden stack, which includes everything. Uh, we have infrastructure business. We have our software business, which includes Red Hat, right. which is a hybrid cloud platform. And then we have consulting business to help client grow through the journey. So those are the three ingredients for uh, IT industry. And uh, today we are here at the infrastructure part of our uh, stack that we're going to talk about. And uh, clearly, you know, semiconductor, as you know, semiconductor industry started in the US. And uh, IBM was the company who created these scaling laws, the laws that Bob Denard created, which, which essentially defined how do you scale transistor, you know, generation over generation. However, over a period of time, you know, IBM's strategy has evolved as the industry evolved, right? Our view is very simple. We want to focus on things which are, which we are good at, which we can do. And we want to partner with companies with the value that they bring to the table. So today, what we focus on is the research and development part because uh, you know that's our strength, that's in our DNA. So we drive research and development agenda, a very strong R&D agenda for IBM's business. And we partner with uh, companies who bring in manufacturing scales or which, who need certain IP for their business so that it's kind of a complementary relationship. And that's our new model where uh, you know, we are focusing on you know, developing technology for our product as well as helping our partners uh, to you know build their product for their business. So that's the new model that we are on right now. Yeah, it's really interesting. You mentioned uh, did you call it the golden stack? Is yes. that what you called it? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to that one. <laughs> I'm watching that, but it is really fascinating. Just having spent some time here, seeing kind of how the research informs everything else, and you've got a really big role in research. And so we've sat down actually on the 6.5, uh, Arvin Krishna, your CEO, joined us. And he also illuminated us on the visions for hybrid, uh, hybrid cloud and AI. And that's something it seems you're very focused on. That's right. How does that sort of continuum function from research to the development of and execution yes. of what's now your hybrid and AI strategy, which we're very clear, those are the areas that you talk about accelerating at, and that's where right now IBM is accelerating that's that that's the yes part on so with the with the with the stack that we work on you know we work with clients we understand the clients needs and then that gives us feedback into okay what type of uh, uh, system technology what type of chip technology what type of process technology we need to develop to solve client problem a great example of that is uh, is uh, our z16 uh, recent announcement where we introduced uh, an AI accelerator inside our Telem processor because we understood that there is a very ne very strong need of uh, you know it, during transaction uh, AI inferencing 
So we were able to translate that into what does it mean at the cloud level, what does it mean from a chip design level and at the process technology level. And here in, uh, in Albany Nanotech, we, uh, we had launched an initiative called AI Hardware Research Center and we used a, a partnership model to develop the core, the inferencing core that, is, that then goes into our own chip that then solves our client's problem. So the fact that we have, we worked on the entire stack, we come from what a client want and then we fortunately at IBM can go at the lowest possible level, at the, at the process level, at the chip level to solve client problem in the best possible way. So one of the things I, I appreciate about uh, the folks that are doing you know, research, and, and by the way, I like to separate research from development. Uh, there's a lot of people who do development. There's not a lot of people who do research, but uh, a lot of things that, that I think about is, is our business models. Because at the end of the day, uh, doing research and development for the sake of research and development uh, doesn't make you know the shareholders happy, and it doesn't. Your university. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, what is the IBM business model? You're in so many different places, and I don't hear a lot about it publicly, uh, but I do ask you. Uh, can you can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. No, that's that's uh, so first to answer first part of your question, we do R and D not for the sake of R and D. We are a business, and anything that we do here in Albany Nanotech or in IBM Research is to have an impact to a product, impact to an IBM product, as well as impact to our partners' product. So that's the first part. It's a research uh, which will have an impact to a business uh, objective at the end. So that's the, that's the way we think, and that's why IBM Research is you know, one of the, I guess, only and extremely successful research organization uh, in the world. Uh, the second part, uh, I will say, is that, uh, yes, the model for research, and we, we at IBM essentially invented a new model for research and development. Uh, we started the model of partnership uh, where companies with a shared need co-invest. And we started this partnership model more than 30 years ago, actually, with IBM's DRAM Alliance, then transitioned into Logic Alliance. And here we are, which is, a, which is world's, uh, in Albany Nanotech, which is world's most advanced uh, public-private partnership, where we are collaborating and co-investing, which is very important because co-investment, not in terms of dollars, but also in terms of intellectual capital, right? Because we bring intellectual capital from IBM, our uh, uh, smart people, smart researchers from IBM, as well as other companies who are partnering with us, they bring their best people, best talent, their best equipment, and best investment, so that it's a, it's a very unique uh, model where we are you know, co-creating at the end for the benefit of our business. So that's the unique model. We do generate uh, a significant amount of intellectual property, IP, uh, that definitely helps us, uh, you know, make sure that we we have, uh, you know, we will have technology from an IBM lens. We will always have knowledge, IP, and technology that we need for our business. And obviously, that can also help us to, you know, monetize that IP through licensing or through other models as well. Yeah, the opportunity for that IP to translate to revenue is tremendous and we of course know that there's so many products that have hit the market and developed that ibm had a per part to play in that's correct and in many of them the average consumer may not know that because you know where it got licensed or sold off or abandoned i mean there's the history of research you just got to go to any of these facilities you and i've had the the fortune of going to headquarters and being in some of these right. and just seeing things and going oh wow did not know ibm did that you know and so it's really really interesting and one of the areas that is very interesting is some of the IP leadership in semiconductors. I believe it was maybe earlier this year, last year, I don't get the dates right, but you announced two nanometer. And of course, that's at the very leading edge of the leading edge. Uh, talk a little bit about that type of innovation, where that's going next and how, you know, kind of how being on the front end is a big part of your strategy. That's, good. that's a great question. And yes, uh, our goal is to be, you know, develop technology, which is absolutely leadership technology, because that's what uh, IBM business wants, right? You will speak with uh, uh, Ross Mori, who is the general manager of IBM Z business. 
product or technology requirement for IBM systems business, Z business and power business is like the ultimate standard. If you can meet the requirement for that, you can meet requirement for everything else that is out there. So clearly, you know, to us, leadership is very important uh, for research division and for, for me as a research, uh, uh, you know, leader responsible for hybrid cloud uh, technologies. Uh, now that said, uh, you know, we, we have been driving this, uh, uh, especially in the Albany Nanotech Center in 2015, you know, we, we announced seven nanometer technology which uh, was world's first uh, announcement of uh, such chip technology using EUV lithography. That got ad adopted by all the major players. Then uh, we were the first one to announce uh, a gate all around nano sheet technology. And that's very interesting because the idea of gate all around was always there. But how do you make it real for product? That was not known. And that's where we, from our product lens, brought in the, sh the sheet idea. And that sheet, nano sheet idea is the idea we believe is going to be adopted by the, you know, most of the companies have already announced. Uh, that will be the structure going forward after FinFET. And then yes, last year uh, in 2021, actually we announced two nanometer technology, which is the second generation of nano sheet technology. We are working on that technology here right now in Albany Nanotech with many partners. Uh, we are co-creating perfecting that technology because we, you know, we really want to make sure that uh, both the, the technology is manufacturable so that our manufacturing partners can, you know, take it for volume production. And at the end, technology has features that IBM needs for our own product. Uh, Ross needs uh, for his Z product, uh, as an example, we need uh, uh, for our cloud product. So we want to make sure both, uh, both of those uh, uh, needs are covered as we continue to make progress. Uh, on this site, we are working on technologies beyond two nanometer now. Uh, you will see more and more come out, uh, you know, over a period of time as we perfect that technology with our partners in all of these cases. Uh, you know, what's beyond nano sheet, it's coming in the pipeline. And another technology that we are very excited about is the chiplet technology. And uh, that's, uh, that's going to be another future, uh, which will supercharge Moore's law in my view, beyond the traditional logic scaling and in fact, during the pandemic, we, you know, we, we invested together with New York State to build a fab here for chiplet innovation. And that's coming online. And, uh, you know, you will see more and more of such, uh, uh, such technology at the, essentially at the forefront coming out of this lab. Mukesh, I would love to sit here for hours and, uh, and talk with you, talk with you uh, about this. But uh, listen, this is the first stop on you know, talking about IBM's uh, full stack approach and also on the future of computing. So this is our first stop and I appreciate uh, us kicking it off uh, with you. And you know, we're gonna talk to, we're gonna talk to Ross, we're gonna talk to a lot of different people about this uh, uh, down the line, but thank you so much for your time and being on the 6.5 for the first time. I appreciate that. Thank you, thanks for the opportunity for, thanks for this great conversation. And uh, you know, we can't wait to share with you all the exciting thing that we do at IBM. That's great. And if you want to tell us, uh, tell us early, you can too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we will do that. <laughs> Take care.